What is going on, New York Giants fans? D. Illa here. So our New York Giants fall to the Washington Commanders 27-22 at MetLife Stadium yesterday. It's another loss for this football team. Um, we have been swept by the Washington Commanders in 2024. Going into this game, it looked like the Giants basically took a page out of the Chicago Bears playbook when they played the Commanders the week before. They saw that the Bears had a lot of success on the ground, especially towards the end of the game. And that's what they dialed up in the first half. A hell of a lot of runs for Tyrone Tracy, Devin Singletary. Daniel Jones had zero yards passing in the first half. I know a lot of people like little stats. The New York Giants and the Chicago Bears have combined for 38 total yards of passing in the past two first halves combined against this Washington Commanders secondary and this, this defense of the Washington Commanders. 38 yards. Over two halves of play. That's insane. That's insane. But yeah, the Giants came out, ran the ball heavy with Tyrone Tracy. Jones, how many attempts did he have in the first half? I don't even know. I know Caleb Williams had nine last week against them, and he was only able to muster up 38 yards. But Tracy, we go through some of the stats in this ball game. Tracy ended up with 16. Rushes for 66 yards. Daniel Jones himself had seven for 54. Devin Singletary also had seven carries for 33. Darius Slayton had one carry for 11 yards. It almost produced a touchdown. He almost scored almost scored twice in that ball game. I started him in fantasy yesterday. I definitely needed at least one of those touchdowns. I'm down by four in my game right now. Started the kicker against the Minnesota Vikings last night. He missed two field goals. Got a couple extra points. I'm basically where I was when I first started when the game started. So he ended up with like zero points. So now I need Kelsey to come out and save my ass, even though the guy that I'm playing has the Chiefs defense. And I think Baker's definitely going to turn the ball over in that ball game. But let's get back to it. Like I said, Slayton had one carry for 11 yards. Running game, running game produced what? I mean, probably close to 150 yards total. I mean, pretty close to that. Uh, Receiving-wise, Malik Neighbors had nine catches for 59 yards, doing his best Jackson Smith and Jigba impression up until yesterday. That's basically a stat line that Jackson Smith and Jigba typically puts up, or that's a good game for Wondell Robinson, the way he's played for this football team during his career. He'll have a 100-yard have a game here and there, but that's typically the stat line he puts up. Nine catches for a whole 50-some-odd 50, 50 yards. That's about what he does. Theo Johnson, three catches for 51 yards, had the touchdown, had a couple drops as well. Darius Slayton, I was definitely surprised he wasn't fed the ball more in this game, ended up in concussion protocol at the end of the game, three catches, 49 yards. Wondell Robinson, three catches, muster, musters up a whole 10 yards. Great job, Wondell. Passing wise, Daniel Jones ended up 20 of 26, 174 yards, two touchdowns, one on the ground, one in the air. Oh, man. I'm not going to come out here and just, you know, crap on Daniel Jones anymore. You know, the fumble, the fumble that basically ended up right in the offensive lineman's gut. You know, I thought we were actually going to get a treat there and watch that big man go rumbling down the field for a potential score, but he just couldn't wrangle it in. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the ball hit the ground. Washington picked it up. They blew the play dead. They thought it was an incomplete pass. Obviously, when Jones was hit, the ball came out before the arm was going forward, so that was a fumble. So that was one of the big turnovers in the ball game. I mean, it's just, you know, the, the, the Giants defense really couldn't apply any pressure to Jaden Daniels throughout the game, much like it, much like the first game when we played Washington. It was no different. And, um, you know, the running game definitely hurt us. Noah Brown, let's go through the stats of the Washington Commanders. I think Noah Brown led the way again like he did in the first game. I mean, Terry McLaurin may have may have beat him by like 10 yards in the first game, but I'm, I'm almost positive Noah Brown had the most yards on the Commanders the first time we played them. Noah Brown, five catches, 60 yards. Illumide, Zacchaeus, two catches, 48 yards. Austin Eckler, three for 41. Diami Brown, one for 24. Ben Sinnott with his second catch of the year, one for 12. Zach Ertz, I'm kind of surprised they held him to one catch for five yards. That's pretty amazing. Terry McLaurin didn't do much throughout the game, only had 19 yards receiving, but he turned into prime Calvin Johnson slash A.J. Green in the red zone, and he had two touchdowns receiving. One play, Deontay Banks just didn't get his head turned around. That's been a flaw of his throughout his career. You know, he can never track the ball, never knows when the ball is coming in his way, just relies on when the receiver is putting up his hands, and then he tries to break the ball up. But, man, you got to get your head turned around and locate where the football is, man, so you can play the ball a little bit better. 
rushing the ball. Chris Rodriguez, I've talked about him on this channel and how he could be a possible solution for a running back needy team, much like a team like the Dallas Cowboys. This is a team that plays in your own division. I don't know how they're not looking at the Washington Commanders practice squad at Chris Rodriguez. I mean, he's been very productive. I think he's, he's close to averaging five yards per, per carry for his career. He led the way for the Washington Commanders. 11 carries, 52 yards. Austin Eckler had 11 for 42. Jaden Daniels had 8 for 35 on the ground. Jeremy McNichols had 8 for 20. A lot of people thought McNichols was going to be the combination with Eckler in that ball game. Turned out Chris Rodriguez got a lot of the work towards the end and put up 11 for 52. I believe that was an average of 4.7 yards per carry. I don't think they can put him on the practice squad again, so I think he's going to have to stay on the active roster, or they will lose him, most likely. So, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about this ball game. Like I said, I, Washington dom dominated the, the ground game, and this was without Brian Robinson on the field, man. The Giants, you know, they controlled the line of scrimmage as far as the rushing, game, as far as the running game goes too. But I mean, you have to produce in the passing game to get to get a win against this team. Um, it, it was basically a carbon copy game of what the Chicago Bears, you know, Commanders game was last last week. You know, the Commanders jumped out to the twelve nothing lead. And then the command, then you know Chicago came roaring back at the end to make it a close game until you know the Noah Brown hail mary took place, and it was, it was much of the same. Much of the same in this game. The Giants were dominated. It was 21-7 at halftime. Then the Giants came came back with some with some clutch throws from Daniel Jones. You know there was an illegal pick on on Darius Slayton at one point in the game that freed up Wando Robinson. Um, it, it didn't look too egregious to me. I mean I. I uh, that 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 play can always be called either way, man. I mean, when it comes to these referees, they're always looking to make sure that you know these wide receivers aren't taking an additional step to impede the progress of these cornerbacks. They're always watching that stuff pretty close, and if they think it's even even in doubt, they're throwing the flag, and they did it on that play. So you know, it's another tough loss for us. We play Carolina this week in London, 9:30. We get to see uh, Jalen Coker. Didn't do much. Jalen Coker really didn't do much against the Saints. A lot of people started Jalen Coker in fantasy. I, I made the mistake of doing that myself. But, you know, the guy had two catches for 36 yards within the first 16 minutes of the game. And then, you know, he, he only had one more target the entire for the next three quarters of play. And it's funny because his receiving prop was 37 and a half. So he only got one more target after getting 36 yards the first 16 minutes of the ball game. Doesn't make any sense to me. But, okay, you know, we'll just, yeah, that's Vegas. Vegas doing some funny shit. I mean, I, it, I, don't, I don't even know what to say about that. But, you know, we get to see Jalen Coker, you know, Xavier Leggett, that tight end that they have. He played pretty well yesterday, too. I think he had over 60 yards on six catches. I think the, the kid from Texas that they drafted, he's starting Jatavian to come on. Jatavian Sanders. Um, yeah, Chuba Hubbard, two touchdowns today, 70 yards. He's going to be tough to stop next week, especially with our rushing defense. You know, Jonathan Brooks may be back for that team. I still think, you know, Chuba's probably going to get the majority of that work. I think they're going to bring, you know, Jonathan Brooks on very, very slowly for that football team. So uh, I think we're going to get a heavy dose, heavy dose of Chuba at least. And uh, we're going to have to control the running game, man. And, and you, know my, you know my stance on this football team right now. I want them to lose games, but that's going to be a tough game for us to lose. If we can't control Chuba Hubbard and we can't control the running game, I mean, then, then you know, it's still going to be a close game, but maybe the Panthers come out with that one. But defensively, I don't think the Panthers have enough to stop the New York Giants. I mean, I really don't. Defensively, they're not working with much. I don't think they can stop a guy like Neighbors. Slayton, if he can get out of concussion protocol, he probably won't play in that game considering he is in concussion protocol and the Giants have to get on a plane and fly halfway across, halfway across the world. So I don't see him playing in this one. Bondell Robinson will be the second target for this football team going into that game. So it's kind of up in the air. But I do want this team to lose. But it's going to be a tough task for them to lose against that Carolina Panthers team. But I think the defensive line is going to have their way with the Carolina Panthers offensive line. I think they're going to put a ton of pressure on uh, what's his name. I think they're going to have their way with them and, and, and produce a lot of sacks, maybe a couple turnovers, Bryce Young. And, and I think the Giants will probably come away with a, a win in that one. I'm not going to be very happy about that, considering that's definitely going to affect our draft status, but, you know, it is what it is.
But that's it for the video. You guys wanted to come out and do a post-game video for this one. Sucks that we lost again, but, you know, it is what it is at this point. And let me talk about Tyrone Tracy again. You know, Tyrone Tracy has been a big topic of discussion throughout this fan base. You know, a lot of people think he should get all the work, and I brought up the fact that I think you should really try to save the kid. And when I say save, along with Malik Neighbors, when I say things like this, I'm not saying to take him off the field altogether. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying to take both those players off the field completely. I'm saying don't increase their workloads to increase the potential of them getting injured. That doesn't make any sense to me right now. Like I've told many people, you could, if, if Tyrone Tracy comes out and has an injury like a Keaton Mitchell did last year, like a Nick Chubb did last, last year, and he's out until halfway through the season next year, all of us aren't going to feel very good about that taking place. And that's the only point I was trying to make when I said that. And that's it. But that's it for the video, you guys. You take it easy. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.